My friends, the Lord is with us, and we celebrate his presence. We celebrate his presence when we worship. We celebrate his presence when we pray. We celebrate his presence when we read his word. And we celebrate his presence in the receiving of communion, when we come to the table of the Lord. During this season, we want to make an invitation for you to share communion in your home. The first communion was in a home, the upper room. It was based on a meal that was shared first in Egypt and then throughout the history of the Hebrew people in their homes. So it's a wonderful place to celebrate the presence of the Lord right where you are. There's a longer communion that you can look at online. It has some more teaching. This will just be an invitation for you to receive the bread. And I just encourage you to get some bread. I have a, a simple cracker here. I have a cup which represents the cup of salvation, some fruit of the vine if you have that, uh, another kind of juice even, or water. Just something that will turn your faith towards God's presence. The power is not in the bread or the cracker or in the cup, but the power is in Christ, and Christ is with us right now. So as we gather in this moment, we invite the presence of the Lord to be with us, we thank you, Lord, for the bread. It is your body. We thank you for the cup of salvation, the covenant that brings us forgiveness and brings us into your family. We prepare our hearts to receive communion. We examine ourselves, not to see if we're good enough, but to come to the point that says, I need a Savior. And Lord, I acknowledge I need a Savior. And Jesus, thank you so much for being my Savior. I receive you in a fresh way, your salvation plan for my life and for the lives of those who are a part of this communion at home right now. May the Spirit of Jesus fill us, and may we celebrate the presence of God by receiving communion together. The Apostle Paul writes these beautiful words to us that we receive from God's Word. He says that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, isn't that amazing? That on the night of his betrayal, on the most difficult night of his life, when his friends fled into the darkness and left him, on the night that he knew that he would be handed over for persecution and opposition, what did he do? He gave thanks. And every time we come, to communion. We come with a thankful heart. We give thanks. He took the bread and he broke it. Just break the bread there that you have. And he said these words, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Our focus in this moment is on Christ, on Christ's salvation, on his body that was broken so that we can be whole. That the stripes that were laid on his broken body are for our healing. And we receive that truth today as we remember Jesus and take the bread together in Jesus' name. Let's eat together. Thank you, Lord, for the bread of Jesus. Now the cup of salvation. So after the same manner, he also took the cup and he said these words, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, which we've just done, and as often as you drink this cup that we're about to do, you make this proclamation. We proclaim the Lord's death. The Lord died on the cross. He went into the tomb and he rose from the dead. That's the gospel message. And he's coming again. Christ in burial, Christ in resurrection, and Christ in his second coming. We look forward to that as we take the cup of salvation and we thank God for the new covenant that we have because of Jesus. Can you take the cup and can you drink together in Jesus' name? So we bless you. In Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name, you are very blessed.